Welcome back. R.A. Dickey ready to go to work in his second World Baseball Classic appearance trying to uh, start a little better than what happened in Phoenix in his first outing earlier in the tournament. And he will face a loaded lineup for Tony Pena and Team Dominican Republic. Let's line them up. It's brought to you by G.I. Joe Retaliation in theaters March 28th. The Dominican Republic leads off with four time All Star Jose Reyes, six time All Star Miguel Tejada, Robinson Cano, hotter than anybody else in the field so far at second base, batting number three. Edwin Encarnacion, Hanley Ramirez, and Nelson Cruz in the middle of the card. Switch hitting catcher Carlos Santana. Ricardo Nanita, the only non big league star in the Dominican lineup. And Alejandro Diaz around things out for Team DR. On the mound for the U.S., the reigning National League Cy Young Award winner, 38-year-old knuckleballer R.A. Dickey. Yeah, well, you mentioned his last start against Mexico. He's a guy who needs to come out and pitch well. In that game, he didn't have control of the knuckleball early. It actually got hurt by the occasional fastball. So keep an eye on Dickey early in this game. I believe, Matt, this we talk about this event being a playoff-type atmosphere. This is the biggest game he's ever started. Just has no postseason experience. It has not started a game in a pennant race in September. While we have a moment, we'll take a look at the U.S. and its heavily decorated defensive alignment tonight. Willie Bloomquist gets the start at third base in place of David Wright, who again was a late scratch with low back soreness. Rollins and Phillips up the middle doesn't get any better. Seven combined gold gloves. Adam Jones thrown into that equation as well with his two keying a terrific athletic outfield for Joe Torre tonight. Yeah, and all those outfielders throw very well. That's important in this ballpark with a huge outfield. R.A. Dickey has uh, taken a little additional time with home plate umpire Angel Hernandez. He's asking for a little bit more work on the mound. We saw this as an issue time in the World Baseball Classic here on Tuesday. There was a double a double header played. And for the two teams that played the nightcap, the U.S. and Puerto Rico, there wasn't a lot of time to get the mound pounded and groomed as though it would have been done, say, at first pitch at 105. Now that was not the case here. There was no first game of a doubleheader tonight. But whatever it is that's not to R.A. Dickey's liking is being addressed before we start this evening. Looks like he's also looking for a rosin bag out there. You know, it's funny he talked about in Arizona pitching out there in the very dry air. The knuckleball didn't feel right in his hand. Much more comfortable with some humidity. It's universal sign language for uh, either you're shoveling it too thick or bring the rake out to the mound. <laughs> the ladder. They've got the rosin bag out there now and they've got the rake. I don't think this is gamesmanship. I, I just I simply don't think it's where R.A. wants it to be right now. So a pregnant pause before we start play tonight and it gives a what is supposed to be a sold out crowd a little opportunity to file into the ballpark tonight. We're told that it is quite a mess outside Marlins Park at this hour, and that's due to a lot of walk ups and a late arriving crowd tonight for the U.S. and the Dominican Republic. A big crowd last night for the elimination game between Italy and Puerto Rico. At stake tonight, one of these two teams, whoever wins, is going to get a ticket stamped to San Francisco for the final round, the semifinals. And then with the hopes of appearing in that championship game on March 19th. The loser tonight will take on Puerto Rico tomorrow to see who else gets to San Francisco. And Saturday afternoon, there'll be a seeding game to decide who wins and who goes as the runner up. And these games become important because of off days. Win tonight, obviously, get the off day tomorrow. Win Saturday, and you get an off day going into the semifinals. A lot at stake, but obviously tonight the mission is win and you're in in the semifinals. The grounds crew really getting aggressive. They well, that was an fresh. old rosin bag. You gotta get a fresh one out there. <laughs> a fresh bag. <laughs> You know, you mentioned R.A. Dickey's rough start, rough start Saturday against Mexico. He gave up the four runs on six hits and four innings. And 
we started going down this road a moment ago. It, it took R.A. a little additional time to get hot in the bullpen. The speculation was that he didn't have the knuckleball where he wanted it to be, and that the thin desert air had something to do with that. R.A. had some success in this ballpark last year. Humidity more of a factor in this part of the world. And as a refresher course, 20 and 6 last year in round to National League. Cy Young honors led the league in innings pitched, ERA, strikeouts, and then dealt to the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays ponied up a two year deal to keep him in Toronto for a couple of more seasons. And R.A. Dickey at 38, throwing the knuckleball without a UCL, the older, older collateral ligament in his pitching elbow. He could go till he's 50 years old. Uh, talking about that first inning at Arizona very unusual for R.A. Dickey last year in the regular season 33 starts he allowed only four runs in the first inning giving up two team Mexico last Friday very unusual actually got hurt with the fastball a couple of times he thought a base runner was running and went to the fastball and got hurt. Primarily obviously about 85 percent of the time. Knuckleballs from R.A. Dickey. A terrific story to start this thing. Jose Reyes, former flushing teammate of R.A. Dickey's, and a new teammate of his in Toronto. And we are underway. 0 and 1 to count to Jose Reyes. Fastball just fouled back. We talked about the success R.A. Dickey had in this ballpark last year in a small sample size. Made three starts here, 2 0 in those starts with an ERA of 2.14. And there's a lot of speculation with knuckleballers, Matt, that they prefer pitching indoors. I know Tim Wakefield always did at the Trop in St. Petersburg. The roof is closed tonight. 0 2 to Reyes, a slap foul. Reyes, Tejada, and Cano for Team DR. Still 0 2. Jose Reyes hit a home run here Tuesday. Part of the come from behind win for Team Dominican Republic. That was the first of the two losses endured by Italy. And the 0-2 is slapped up the middle. Phillips backhands in. Gets Reyes. There's one away. All right, we've seen some terrific plays throughout this tournament from Brandon Phillips. That's another one. He made it look easy, but he knows the clock in his head is going fast with Reyes down the line. Catch and throw all in one motion, and that motion is going towards the outfield. Still has enough on the throw. One gun base is empty now for six time All Star and former league MVP Miguel Tejada. Number ball is swung out and missed. Tejada was used as a pinch hitter in the win on Tuesday. He not only gets the start tonight, but he gets the start at third base. Some thought if Tejada got a start in this classic, it would be at DH. Maybe a little bit of a surprise here. Obviously, Eric Guy Barr is another option for manager Tony Pena. You've got to remember that Miguel Tejada, he is like the elder statesman of this team. Really an icon of the Dominican Republic, plays winter ball there every year. They're counting, if they're going into that, what they call their most important game, they want Miguel Tejada in the lineup. There's a swing and a drive out to left field. It's going to stay playable for Ryan Brock, and there are two away. Tony Pena told us before that this round of the tournament began here in Miami that they are treating this World Baseball Classic with the utmost importance. That is Team Dominican Republic. They had a rather embarrassing ouster in 2009 at the hands of Cinderella Kingdom of the Netherlands. A completely different roster mix this time around. Here's Robinson Cano now.
The DR, the only undefeated club at this point still alive in the tournament. Cano is the offensive hero on Tuesday. Three for four with a home run and a double. And Matt, I don't care what league you're in, if you're in Williamsport, somebody comes to the plate with a batting average that starts with a six, it's going to get your attention. Knuckle balls low and it's two balls and no strikes. Edwin Encarnacion waits next. Cano leads the tournament so far with 12 hits and 22 total stolen bases. Here's a knuckle ball that Cano saw well, but look at the dip at the end. It did start high, but boy, that's some good movement right there early on. Good sign for Dickey. Two and two. We talked a lot about the pitch counts in the World Baseball Classic for the first round. That number was 65. It's at 80 now here in Miami. This is a second round matchup. And the pitch counts will again increase when the tournament advances to San Francisco this weekend for the championship round. Here's the 2 2. The bat early on, you can see a lot of swings for the Dominican team. Very aggressive, but. That status quo for R.A. Dickey. No, but no pitcher in the big leagues last year had hitters swing more often on his pitches than R.A. Dickey. It looks good coming in. Team U.S. pitching coach Greg Maddox most impressed with Dickey watching him throw for the first time when the team gathered to work out about three weeks ago and a swing and a miss. So the National League's strikeout leader last year strikes out a guy who led the world in batting average against right handed pitching last year underway in Miami. Team USA starting lineup presented by G.I. Joe retaliation in theaters March 28. Jimmy Rollins leads it off as he has all tournament long. He has uh, had a great tournament seven for 19 in World Baseball Classic play. Phillips and Braun follow five time all star and former league MVP Joe Maurer batting cleanup and DHing tonight. Giancarlo Stanton in right field. That's usually where David Wright has hit in this tournament. Hosmer Jones Aaron Sebia and Willie Bluquist will make his first start in the World Baseball Classic. Team USA taking swings against 29 year old twins property right hander Samuel Duduno. First pitch of the ball game to Jimmy Rollins misses to make it one and oh Rollins seven for 19 as we mentioned in the tournament a couple of hits on Tuesday in the U.S. win over Puerto Rico. Well it is a different story Tom without David Wright in the lineup and it's not that Team USA has nobody else that can pick him up after all Joe Torre's loaded with options however the fact remains David Wright had been the Americans most productive hitter he's been their hottest hitter and he certainly had the most opportunities in that five hole the way the hitters on base have been getting on in front of him, it seems like he comes up with the bases loaded every other plate appearance. Now it will fall to John Carlos Stanton earlier in this tournament in the eighth spot. 3 1 to Rollins is a little pop for the shortstop, Jose Reyes. So one gone for Samuel Duduno. And I think early on it'll be difficult to pick up the ball from Samuel to do no he's actually difficult to catch Joe Maurer of course the DH with the twins DH tonight has caught to do with the twins and actually likens his fastball to a knuckleball. He said I would set up in the middle of the plate just remind him to keep the ball low and then let the fastball go where it wants sometimes it sinks sometimes it cuts. Here's Brandon Phillips now. Well, Duduno threw the ball Saturday and was very effective against Spain. It's something that had been a problem for him last year among his 15 starts in the big leagues with the Twins was the base on balls. That issue did not surface on Saturday for shutout innings. He allowed just four base hits and most encouragingly for Team Dominican Republic did not walk a batter. Yeah, that jumped out at me on the stat line. The no walks, you're right. That's been the bugaboo for him coming up. 
Originally thought of as maybe as bullpen guy as a two pitch pitcher. He's got a very good curveball as well, but he's been able to mix in some changeups and some sliders, and now it looks like he does have a future as a starter. Phillips has a base hit through the left side. A one out base runner as we take a look at Tony Pena's defense for Team DR tonight. In the infield, it's Tejada Reyes, two time gold Glover Robinson, Cano and Edwin and Carnacion, Carlos Santana catching, Nanita Deaza and Cruz in the outfield. And the note on Miguel Tejada is an interesting one. Over 2,100 career big league games, 141 of those have been played at third base. And a lot of that came later in his career. But he's the choice. At third base tonight. One out, one on now for Ryan Braun. Team USA's five time All Star and former league MVP, six for 16 so far in World Baseball Classic play. And Matt, one thing to keep an eye on early the U.S. has been very aggressive on the bases. They think Taduno is a guy that they can run on. Now he has started to incorporate a slide step into his repertoire, but if he does not slide step, he is slow to the plate. In his career, people run on to Duno. They're successful 10 out of 11 times. A ball and a strike. We'll see if Phillips looks for an opportunity to run here. DH Joe Mauer waiting on deck for Team USA. Phillips stays put, and Braun swings and misses to fall behind one and two. Yeah, here's an example of that fastball we're talking about. See that ball ride down and in on Ryan Braun. Good late action. Anytime you see a catcher backhand the fastball like that, you know it's got late. Swing and a miss. Same story. Came back with the breaking ball right here. Left it up a little bit. Got away with it. So a two out base runner now as our twin story continues it's Joe Maurer now the designated hitter. We've made the note often the fact that the twins put more players in the World Baseball Classic than any other big league organization. The maximum any team could send to this event is 14 and the twins were generous enough to lend out 13 of their personnel. It's a strike to Joe Maurer, a couple of twins squaring off here. I guess the more relevant note is that among the five teams that are still alive, and Japan and the Kingdom of the Netherlands are already waiting in San Francisco. When you count those two teams, these two teams, and Puerto Rico, who has a chance to advance with a win tomorrow. It's the Toronto Blue Jays who are the best represented now with the field having narrowed. Seven Jays still alive in the classic including a handful here tonight. A ball and a strike to count to Joe Maurer Giancarlo Stanton waiting on deck. Samuel DeDuno was actually first signed by the Colorado Rockies as a free agent out of the Dominican Republic in 2003. The Twins are his third organization. It took him a while to stick. And one of many who had to go through Tommy John surgery to get to the big leagues. That was back in 2008. The one two and Maurer shoots it into left. Phillips advances to second. And Team USA rallying with two out in the first. Well, he has just been on everything in this tournament. That ball left up in the strike zone. Great two strike approach, letting the ball get deep. Maurer obviously knows to do no well. I think he caught eight starts for him last year. And in fact, Joe Maurer was front and center. 
indicate to the scouting report before the game, leading those reports and letting his hitters know what to expect. Giancarlo Stanton, due in part to the late scratch of David Wright, batting as high in Joe Torre's order tonight as he has throughout the World Baseball Classic. Had a couple of hits on Tuesday, his first hits of the tournament. And back here in his comfortable home environs of Marlins Park. The breaking ball misses to make it 1 0. Eric Hosmer waiting next. With one out, Phillips singled with two away. Maurer has a base hit. And now it's two balls and no strikes to Giancarlo Stanton. You know, you can understand the situation with David Wright. If there's even a little tweak, there's no way Joe Torre is going to take a chance with him. No, definitely erring on the side of caution, especially someone who did have a back issue a couple of years ago where he did miss two months. A broken bat bouncer up the middle. Reyes is there. Flips to Cano. Too late. Everybody's safe. Those two have already turned some highlight type double plays and plays together in this tournament. Unable to get the force out on Maurer here. Yeah, just didn't get enough on that backhand flip. That's a change up to second base when he needed a two seam fastball. Certainly gets the ball in plenty of time to record the out. It's more of a shovel than a flip, and it just doesn't have enough juice on it. A big early opportunity for Team USA. Here's Eric Cosmer. Bases loaded two away. Hosmer was one for five on Tuesday. Four for 18 in the tournament so far. Let's see if the Duno attacks him inside. Hosmer has been tied up with good fastballs throughout this tournament. Prefers the ball away. Big swing and a miss. Watch the action on this fastball right here. Watch the catcher's glove, Santana's glove. That'll give you an indication of how much the ball is moving. As a bases loaded hitter last year at the AL Central, Eric Cosmer was 5 for 12 as a Royal. Two balls and a strike. Phillips, Bauer, and Stanton with two gone. You know, you hear pitchers and pitching coaches talk about stress pitches and stress innings, and it has started right from the top of the first for Samuel Deduno. There's no easing into this one tonight. Tough pitch to lay off, and it's to three balls in a strike now. Yeah, I like the thought here. You know, he's sitting fastball, throws the change up, good execution. That's just a better job by Hosmer to stay off that pitch. It looked like a strike most of the way, dropped out of the zone. That's a great take by Hosmer. The 3 1. Ball four, he walked in a run. The Americans are on the board first tonight. Talked about with this fastball, the action, command, and movement. See a lot of movement on that fastball as well, but wild out of the strike zone. Team USA did not score in the first inning in any of the first round matchups they had in Phoenix. Now that the tournament has come here to Miami, the Americans have scored in the first inning in both of their games, and already we see bodies headed out to the Dominican bullpen. Yeah, you can see Tony Payne is the one doing all the talking as the bullpen gets busy out there. And 
I think what he's telling him, at least what I'd be telling him, is you got to trust that fastball. Go back to the Joe Maurer plan and set up in the center of the plate, aim for the center, and let the ball go where it wants. You try to pitch toward corners, try to be too fine with it. He doesn't have that kind of control with that movement. The Dominicans had to come back from a 4 0 deficit to beat Italy on Tuesday. They would like to prefer, they would like to avoid that is that same kind of big early hole here. 1 0 for the U.S., and here's Adam Jones, bases loaded with two gone. Thirty two home runs last year at Baltimore eighty two runs batted in. Two and oh. It took Edson Volquez getting through the first on Tuesday. To come back around and eventually right the ship and give the Dominicans a chance to beat Italy. I'm not sure the leash is going to be real long with the Duno here. Now this game is managed like a game seven. Jones bailing out. That one missed as well. Yeah, he went to the breaking ball there, but you saw the first two pitches. The velocity was actually creeping up to 93, an indication of perhaps overthrowing. And here it just holds on to that breaking ball a little too long. Nine of the last 11 pitches by Sam Deduno have missed. Three and one. Duno trying to get out of an early mess. Bases loaded with two gone. The Americans on the board on the bases loaded walk. Full countdown. Not a lot of heads up here between Jones and Duno. They met once last year. Adam got to him for a home run in a one for three afternoon. for the Dominicans. Ask Sam Deduno. It ain't easy trying to get through a lineup of all stars. Found something on that strikeout of Adam Jones that left the bases loaded. One in the U.S. first. It came on a bases loaded walk. Top of the second inning, Edwin Encarnacion, Hanley Ramirez, and Nelson Cruz against R.A. Dickey. Dickey got through the Dominicans in order in the first. Back to back strikes on knuckleballs, and it's 0 2. He's got tremendous control of the knuckleball early on. Pitches. But Tom, I mean, we're already seeing this. It's an overused cliche with this game seven type emotion tonight. You don't think this game means something? Look at this right here. And how about the big time execution by Deduna? He's 30 pitches into the inning here. Most of them thrown out of the stretch. And breaks off a 3 2 break ball for a called strike three. That's execution right there. Here's Hanley Ramirez now. The former National League Rookie of the Year and National League batting champ as a Marlin. One for two with an RBI on Tuesday in the victory over Puerto Rico. A ball and a strike. Nelson Cruz waiting on deck with one gone. Kind of a 
delayed appeal that time and out at first base that's where Katsumi Manabe Japanese umpire on this crew said no swing two balls and a strike to the three time all star Hanley Ramirez. Swing and a drive and that ball is absolutely crushed. Oh my. That was a 75 mile an hour knuckleball that got over the left field wall as though it was shot out of a cannon. Nelson Cruz now. And this seemed to be one of those rare knuckleballs that just sort of stayed on plane. Where it really didn't have much drop to it but stayed right in the barrel of the bat. You're not supposed to be able to hit him that far in this ballpark, Tom. You know that. Yeah, when, when you make this park look small, you've done something. Wow. There aren't many that get it up there during BP. I mean, that cleared the Clevelander area, that cleared the seating area where the flags are. There's a sign up there that says 427. And if that sign wasn't there, that ball would still be going. This is not the kind of park where you see a lot of guys stand and admire it, admire it, knowing that they got all of it. He watched it. Full count down, three balls and two strikes to Nelson Cruz. And, and just when you go assigning that kind of prodigious power to the knuckleball of the Dome Stadium, know that it didn't happen very often for R.A. Dickey in a dome last year. Five starts in dome stadiums allowed only two home runs. Cruz pops this one up. And watch this ball just kind of stay there, flatten out. He had a good long look at this pitch. And go ahead and admire it when you hit it like that. That's up at the bar. Yeah. Here's the switch in and catcher Carlos Santana now. A ball and a strike to Santana. Check that. Make it 0 2. 0 2. Carlos 2 for 11 in the World Baseball Classic so far. He has drawn six walks, however. Still a robust on base percentage despite only two base hits. A ball and two strikes. You know, Matt, you talked about the Duno in that first inning being a stress inning, and rightfully so. Off the end of the bat, little flare that's going to dump in for a two out base hit. And I think every inning against the Dominican Republic is a stress inning. Coming into this game, 36 innings, only six times did they go in order. Up the ball and the weight off the plate, and actually Santana is fortunate enough not to square that one up. Off the end of the bench, drops into center field. Here is the only non-household name in the Dominican lineup tonight. He is the left-handed hitting left fielder, Ricardo Nanita. Just one for 11 so far in WBC play. 31 year old outfielder he's been around a known commodity in the Dominican Republic not necessarily among big league fans he's Blue Jays property that one gets away from J.P. Aaron Sibia. and down to second goes Santana. That 
It's a casualty of the knuckleball. Sometimes it moves so much. Aaron Seabee, obviously, with the Toronto Blue Jays this spring, learning how to catch that pitch from Dickey. Glass still in session. That's a process that began in the winter. Both R.A. Dickey and J.P. Aaron Seabee live in Nashville in the offseason. And the two have been together long before Jays camp began. They like to say that's a work in progress. Two and one now. It rounds that one to first. Hosmer's got it. Flips to the pitcher covering. Nothing after the home run. Team USA will come back to the plate after a quick timeout. But first, we take a look at another Team USA GI Joe retaliation in theaters March 21st. For MLB tonight, right after the game, complete coverage of this big one between the U.S. and the Dominican Republic. MLB tonight covering the World Baseball Classic through the championship game March 19th in San Francisco. J.P. and Sibia leads things off for Team USA and a base hit to left field is what greets Samuel Deduno in the second. Fastball right down the middle here. Aaron Sibia's dead red fastball hitter first pitch. It's interesting now Tori Joe Tori the manager has some options here. I know in his postseason history with the Yankees he really liked to get out early with the bunt to play for runs early in a game in a postseason game. Now here at the bottom of the lineup with Bloom Quicks at first at bat a week. Bunt may be in order. Bloomquist is indeed bunting and takes a strike. That is the way Joe Torre has played this World Baseball Classic too, Tom, as you know. He has asked everybody to be ready to bunt. He has asked everybody from Jimmy Rollins to Adam Jones to Ryan Braun to turn around and bunt on occasion so far in the tournament. Lipsquiz pulls back that time one and one and it's really not just Joe Torre we've seen it throughout this tournament you have to realize this is tournament baseball every run is just crucial and precious the course of a regular season as compared to the WBC bunts are coming sacrifice bunts at least twice as often as they do during the regular season that's successfully executed bunts we've seen a lot of bunts that have not been put down. You know it just doesn't happen that frequently for big league hitters to be called on to execute the bunts as often as it's happened in this tournament time as you mentioned. Willie Blumquist did not bunt once last year. Zero sacrifices. He's been in the big leagues for 11 years and he has averaged two sacrifices a season. I'm actually surprised at those numbers he does so many things well you would think that would be a part of his game. You know, the other thing Tori told me about bunting in this tournament he has an all star lineup a lot of times bunting is not just a function of game situation but where you are in the lineup. In other words you're not going to bunt to set up the bottom of the order but you can with this kind of lineup. Hey look out. Three balls and a strike. Willie takes some time to take a, a look at Willie Randolph in the third base coaching box to see if the bunt's still on three balls and a strike. You saw Miguel Tejada go to the mound right there. That's another reason why he's in this game as a third baseman. Not just a designated hitter. Sort of a captain on the infield settling down saying hey he wants to give us an out and let him bunt the ball. We'll take the out. Three one pitches bunted and it's a good one. And Carnacion to Cano Cumberland. They get the out on Blinkwist. The sacrifice works as Aaron Sibia moves into scoring position. Nice play by Blinkwist. Perfect position to bunt that ball. A nice play by Encarnacion here. He did, this play is really more difficult than it looks here. Didn't have a lot of time. Makes a good strong throw. Give the second baseman covering a clear look at that throw, not into the line. 
you know you talked a little bit about what Willie Bloomquist is doing on this roster Tom and as Jimmy Rollins stands in that was one of the things that Joe Torre made very clear early on in the roster selection phase of the World Baseball Classic in 2009 the U.S. had multiple all stars at each position and it was very difficult to not only win that way but to get guys reps after all when this is over on the 19th guys are going to go back to camp and the last thing that Joe Torre wants is to have a bunch of players here who needed to have three four at bats a day that had to sit out. Well Willie Bloomquist is a guy who is used to having large chunks of time off. He's a utility player and I mean that in a complimentary sense. He can play everywhere on the diamond. That's the role that he serves with Team USA. In fact, Bloomquist has done everything on a big league field except for pitch and catch. Yeah, I think they did a great job with the roster construction. They were up front with guys like Bloomquist and Shane Victorino about that. A ball and two strikes to count to Jimmy Rollins. Telling them that basically we're going to have pretty much a set lineup. We'll work you into games. But we can't promise you the kind of bats you normally get in the course of spring training. Aaron Stevia, the runner off the second. And Rollins is caught looking. Well, he just catch the back door, or at least Angel Hernandez says he catches the back door here with this breaking ball. And Jimmy Rollins has got a beef. Jimmy Rollins is one of those guys, he'll set up straight right on the plate. He gets a good look at that outside corner, and he saw that off the plate. Two time All Star Brandon Phillips now. You may recall from watching the early portion of the tournament in the first round when the U.S. was in Phoenix, they had a devil of a time scoring runs with runners in scoring position. Productivity just failed them. It all seemed to turn around on Saturday with one swing of the bat from David Wright the grand slam and then things clicked on Sunday against Canada very productive on Tuesday against Puerto Rico yeah, to me one of those stats you know runners in scoring position can be extremely overrated I think it's more about opportunities if you're not getting opportunities you know, that, that's really a negative not cashing in that's a matter of time. You keep putting people on the bases and the U.S. kept doing that. It really to me especially with this lineup was only a matter of time before David Wright would hit a grand slam. But Eric Hosmer would clear the bases with a double. Keep banging on the door you'll eventually knock it in. The Americans just two for their first 26 with runners in scoring position. Phillips takes a strike it's two and one. I'm going to make a prediction Mr. Perducci. Go ahead. We saw one, two, three inning in the first. <laughs> we will see less than three more. Put the over under on one, two, three innings at two and a half. And I will interpret that as a statement more about these lineups than about the pitching. It's it, absolutely right. And it's it has that postseason feel. Where every at bat is going to be a grinder. Two-two to Phillips on the ground to third. Tejada's got it, and the U.S. is turned away in the second. Night in Miami with Tom Verducci and Heidi Watney, Matt Vasgersian here in Miami for the second round of the World Baseball Classic, a big one tonight. The Dominican Republic and Team USA. You hear a lot of horns in the stands tonight. There is a lot of Dominican support, in part because Santa Domingo is only 847 miles away. Two hours, 215, something around that neighborhood. Hop on a plane, get to Miami. And the Dominican Republic has such a proud baseball culture. You talk to anybody about it and where they'll say uh, hey you know U.S. may claim that baseball is the national pastime there. 
maybe baseball was invented in the USA after Doubleday and folklore etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's nothing that competes with baseball in the Dominican the way other sports may compete with baseball here in the U.S. Absolutely not. And there's nothing that competes with this atmosphere. You talked about the music. I mean, there's music constantly throughout this game. Alejandro de Aza leads things off in the third. I mean, we got all kinds of drums. We got trumpets. I mean, you think about the guys leaving their house. I got my keys. I got my cell phone. I got my trumpet. <laughs> I know you were talking about that uh, in front of the doubleheader on Tuesday, the fact that you've never seen or heard such a vast array of instrumentation at a sporting event. There's some full bands here. It's, it's entertaining. <laughs> the atmosphere is terrific. Three balls and a strike is a count to Alejandro de Aza. Well, consider this when you talk about what's happening in the Dominican in regards to baseball. Over 20% of all the players playing minor league baseball in the U.S. are from the Dominican Republic. This is a country that is smaller than the state of California, yet 20% of the players playing in minor league baseball are from the Dominican. California, Texas, New York, Florida, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. We're not talking about the Electoral College. We're talking about state populations bigger than that in the Dominican. And it's still full three balls and two strikes to Alejandro de Aza. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to go over there and it, it is amazing how baseball is such a fabric of the life there. I mean any patch of grass I'm talking about you know on the median of highways as well. You're going to see kids out there playing some form of baseball. The three two to Diazzo ball four. It's a good battle. It's no longer a novelty. We talk about how 20% of all minor league players are born in the Dominican, but that number of Dominican born big league players is on the rise. We just took a sample slice every 10 years starting in 1972. And it's a steadily increasing figure. Here's Jose Reyes now. Reyes grounded a second to open up the ball game tonight. Well, once again, the sacrifice in order, but in this case, you don't want Reyes to give himself up completely. Normally, if you're playing full sacrifice, you'd like to see that guy square around early, give yourself up. But in this case, with the way he runs, you can almost play it as try to bunt for a base hit. If you get thrown out, move the runner up. That's good, too. Same take that running start right there. A ball and strike to count to Jose Reyes. You know, there's a there's the old saying that that's been around and it's applied to more than just the Dominican Republic that you don't walk off the island quote unquote meaning that players from the Caribbean countries they are raised swinging the bat pitch selection is not something they're concerned about so much throw to first and they got it. You see him start towards second base there. He's certainly running on this pitch, but R.A. Dickey has one of the best right-handed moves in baseball. I'll put it right up there with Justin Verlander. His feet are so quick. He sp spins his feet around as if he's inside of a phone booth. For you younger people, you can Wikipedia phone booth. <laughs> the strike to Reyes. Jay Perry and Sibia likes it. Yeah, Eric Hosmer had to follow him around there because Deaza cut off his slide. And a swing and a miss. 
Boy, from a leadoff base runner with nobody out to two out bases empty in about 35 seconds. Well, that's called helping yourself. I mean, he is so atypical for a knuckleball pitcher. Talking about Ari Dickey, you know, you think of guys like Charlie Huff and Phil Negro, maybe they don't get off the mound well, not really athletic out there. He allowed only four stolen bases last year, in part because of that pickup, pickoff move. Here's Tejada now. Allowed only two bunt singles the whole year. He fields his position very well. Tejada fly to left in his first at bat tonight and is behind here 0 2. You know, as we continue talking a little bit about the Dominican culture in baseball, and you mentioned this earlier, Tom, the fact that Miguel Tejada is really Mr. DR in terms of this current roster mix. There's a book called Away Games written by Marco Breton and Jose Luis Villegas and it's the life and times of a Latin ball player. There's a lengthy passage on Miguel Tejada specifically in the book that would just missed him. And you know you hear the stories about players from some of the Caribbean countries growing up in poverty playing forms of baseball as you talked about sticking ball games rolling up a newspaper grabbing a tree branch. Miguel Tejada is from a very modest upbringing and he dumps a base in at his short left center here. And modest is probably an overstatement. He was born into poverty on the island. No question and he plays the game still like he's 16 years old when he signed always with a smile. I can tell you about a few years ago I was lucky enough to umpire a spring training game that's a story for another day but Tejada was the shortstop for the Orioles and I can tell you if you think infield chatter is dead in the major leagues you haven't been around this guy I mean he was non-stop I mean it wasn't <laughs> quite bad about about a swing no. but every pitch he had something to say it was really entertaining Robinson Cano a shot that gets past Phillips on into right field Tejada to second Jim Carlos Stanton showing off that big arm almost threw it behind Tejada. Robinson Cano stays locked on and the Dominicans are rallying with two gone. Uh, this ball's a rocket. You're talking about one of the best second basemen in all of baseball. Really no chance. I mean he's trying to play like a hockey goalie right here but they're just too much steam on that ball. Here's Encarnacion now with two runners aboard and two away. As stingy as R.A. Dickey was most of the time last year, he got particularly tough in spots like this. Two out, runners in scoring position, the opponents hit a buck 53. He's got Tejada and Cano aboard here against a hitter who's coming off a career season. Right back up the middle, and no sooner do you say that R.A. Dickey fields his position well, Tom, that he goes down and makes that look routine. Nothing comes of the two out micro rally in the DR third. Middle of the inning, it's still a 1 1 ball game. Limp has provided a unique perspective for fans for over 25 years and is thrilled to be a part of the 2013 World Baseball Classic. Ryan Braun will lead things off in the U.S. third. The Americans scored first on a bases loaded walk. Dominican Republic tied it on the Hanley Ramirez home run. Braun off the end of the bat with a drive to right. Cruz is there for it. Not that this wouldn't have been caught in other ballparks Tom but a lot of the good contact you see here that dies before the warning track is a constant reminder of how big this ballpark plays. 
Yeah, this place is enormous. This is the third toughest place to hit a home run last year, at least just going by home runs per game. You can see why, looking at those dimensions and the high wall in center field adds really to the depth of this ballpark. You really got to crush one to get one out. 418 with some interesting nooks and crannies out there in, in left center field. Joe Maurer singled in the first inning tonight. Seven for 15 so far in the World Baseball Classic. And typical Joe Maurer. This is where you can settle in, in your lounge chair and just watch. He's never in a hurry up there. Swings at the first pitch fewer times than anybody in baseball. And we've seen throughout this tournament five, six, seven pitch at bats with Joe Maurer. Duduno gets a strike call, and it's to two and one now. He and Joey Votto are the two guys to me. The more pitches they see, regardless of what the count is, it actually swings in their favor. It doesn't matter if he's got two strikes. It's almost like he just decodes the pitcher, rules out some pitches, rules in some others. Obviously comfortable with hitting with two strikes. Mauer has hit cleanup throughout the tournament for Team USA. Duduno just missed high. Fans wanted that one. It's three and two. Yeah, this has been his go-to pitch here with that breaking ball. It was high. Here we are again, three and two. Joe Mauer. Giancarlo Stanton waiting next with the bases empty. And Mauer rolls that one out to first for Encarnacion. So that'll bring up the five hole hitter Giancarlo Stanton and that's where David Wright had been hitting for Team USA throughout the tournament. For more on his status tonight let's check in with Heidi Watney. Well Matt I just spoke with David Wright here in the dugout. He said this uh, stiff back is something he's been feeling for about a week now but he went in to get treatment today and every single time a player goes in to get treatment here at the World Baseball Classic their team is notified. So it is the Mets trainers that decided he wasn't going to play today. Wright said if it was up to him he would have still played. He wanted to stay in the lineup. He said he's going to go to Port St. Lucie tonight as soon as he hears back from those trainers get checked out and he's hoping to come back and be able to play in the next game for the USA. He said if this was April he would be playing. Matt. Heidi I guess that's that's encouraging information. Thank you for Met fans. It's encouraging that it's not anything serious at least not that not that David feels. You wonder about driving to Port St. Lucie in the morning with a bad back though tonight it's over two hours in the car obviously it's it sounds precautionary but they are so careful with all these players Heidi talked about the communication with the clubs you know that really is involved as well with the pitching schedules for all the pitchers that Greg Maddox has on this staff it's really driven by the clubs more so than it is Team USA. Whoa. Looked at it to do those fingers. Yeah, he's laughing. He knows he's not throwing at him here. This is a breaking ball. You're absolutely right. Just slips out of there. But in talking to Joe Torrey and Greg Maddox about this staff, you know, he really wants to get Luke Gregerson and Tim Collins in this game. They need the work. So that more than game situation, a lot of times will dictate pitcher choice. Yeah, I think the lay fan defaults to thinking about how teams put restrictions on players. Just as important are teams' encouragement for guys to get innings at bats. And that's an issue with a couple of those relievers, as you mentioned. There's ball four to Stanton. So the two out walk here in the third. You saw a little snapshot at how productive David Wright had been in the tournament. And had he been allowed to play tonight with more at bats who knows he might have been able to set a WBC RBI record already among all time World Baseball Classic RBI leaders. What'd you say about one two three innings Matt. Yeah we've got uh, one out of six turns of bat so far. So you were going to forget that. <laughs> Here's Eric Osborne now. Osmer drew that bases loaded walk that put the U.S. on the board in the bottom of the first.
Eric, the latest add to the Team USA roster when Mark Teixeira was lost due to injury. Swing and a foul ball. At least we're guessing it's foul because Stanton didn't go anywhere off the bag at first. No. You know, Giancarlo Stanton read foul ball signal from Angel Hernandez, it seemed like. He's saying, what's going on? Thought it was foul. He should be standing on second base right now. One and two to Hosmer. Let's take a look. Did in fact Hernandez signal that ball foul? He clearly swings over that fastball. It's off go the ahead, glove. Go, go. Bo is on top of it. <laughs> of course. What is he not on top of? And a called strike three taken by Hosmer. Samuel Deduno really demonstrative tonight. To the fourth inning, Hanley Ramirez will lead things off for the Dominicans. His second inning home run evened up the score at one in the second. Yeah. Never got an official distance, but we could plainly see it was at least 427 feet. <laughs> How about long? Real long. Ramirez, Cruz, and Santana here in the fourth. Two. Uh, you're looking at a different hitter from last year in Hanley Ramirez. Check out on the left last year. Look at that leg kick. The knee is up belt high. He was the worst hitter in the big leagues on curveballs last year because he didn't have the timing. Now look at the leg kick. Wow, what a difference. Gets that foot down much quicker. Doesn't have timing issues. And clearly on time on that knuckleball. A ball of two strikes to Hanley Ramirez. It was Warren Spahn who said hitting his timing and pitching is disrupting that timing and I really thought that leg kick last year got him a lot of trouble in timing. Slapped down to second base for Phillips and one away for Ari Dickey in the fourth. Where timing will especially show up is on breaking pitches. We can measure everything these days and as I said statistically he was the worst hitter in the big leagues against breaking balls last year. Nelson Cruz now with one away. He flied to center in his first at bat tonight. That was R.A. Dickey's 62nd pitch of the night. He has now matched his total from his first start in Phoenix over the weekend, the loss to Mexico. Dickey went four in that one. Having much better success tonight. Again, the pitch count in this round of the World Baseball Classic is 80. You know, for Greg Maddox, it was kind of a getting to know you experience working with R.A. Dickey when these workouts with this team began. And one of the impressions that Greg had was how firm R.A. Dickey throws his knuckleball. And that's been talked about. The fact that his is a little different than the Negro Huff Wakefield variety that we've seen in the big leagues over the years. I think it's a good word. It is firm, and I think that allows him better control than most, most of those knuckleball pitchers. Most of the traditional knuckleball pitchers will just throw it up there and let it go where it wants to go. I think R.A. has an idea. Never know quite sure how much break, but I think because of the velocity, he can throw it two spots. Yeah, R.A. told us before the Phoenix games that when he met with Charlie Huff in the mid-2000s, his question to Charlie among them was how how hard can I throw this and the answer was throw it as hard as you want as long as you can remove the spin easier said than done that shot out to center field and it's going to get past Adam Jones Nelson Cruz on his way into second Uh, 
This ball was absolutely scalded. You can see a little bit here how much this ball actually moves. Really just squared it completely on the barrel of the bat. A one out runner in scoring position now for the switch hitting catcher Carlos Santana, who singled in the second. Two to Carlos Santana. It was really a getting to know you process, not only for Greg Maddox, but for Joe Torre with RA. And among the questions that Joe had, is he going to care who catches him? The answer to that was no. It makes sense to have Aaron Sibia out there as Santana's caught looking and straightened up at strike three. See if this pitch is in the zone. Came in high. If he got the top of it. Oh boy. At least Daniel Hernandez said it got the top of it. Two away now. It'll be up to the left handed hitting left fielder, Ricardo Nanita. We talked about the Blue Jays putting a lot of players into these last handful of games here in the second round. Ricardo Nanita, one of them, though he has never been to the big league level with 10 years of minor league experience under his belt. Out to center field, and Jones will handle this one to retire the side. Nothing comes of the one out double in the fourth to the bottom of the inning, still a 1 1 tie. Like this can be. It's also the kind of body language, Tom, that during the course of the regular season, you not only wouldn't see it, but if you did, it would likely be misinterpreted as meaning something else. Absolutely. But this is completely different. You know, I asked Nick Punto playing for Team Italy the other day, these kinds of things kind of rub you the wrong way. He said, absolutely not. He said, we're out there blowing kisses ourselves, Team Italy was. <laughs> it's one of the things I love about the tournament. Listen, the rules of engagement have been narrowed down to one in this kind of tournament, and that is there are no rules. A ball and a strike to count to Adam Jones here. Jones, Aaron Sebia, and Bloomquist. A lot of the protocols, a lot of what players are used to in terms of baseball culture is if not completely thrown out the door, then it's revised a little bit. For an international tournament like this. Well, we talked about all the butts. We talked about the emotions and displays. There was a game between Mexico and Canada where a brawl broke out because someone bunted with a six run lead in the ninth inning. Again, would you do that during the regular season? Of course not. In this tournament, it's allowed, and I think it's actually encouraged because every run is precious, especially that first round when run differential comes into play. The 2-2 two -two to Jones. That's lined out to right field, the leadoff base hit. Well, let's take you back to Saturday. The aforementioned misinterpretation of the bunt. Mexico and Canada after Chris Robinson had bunted with a big lead. The next batter was thrown at. Arnold Leone finally hit Rene Tassoni after the warning, and it was on. Seven players were ejected, including Arnold Leone and Rene Tassoni. And it stemmed because Luis Cruz, Mexico's third baseman, misinterpreted that bunt. Didn't get the fact that Canada was just trying to add on because of the run differential. He thought that they were showing up the Mexican team. Canada had a big lead at the time. Watching Leon throw at him, that was like watching someone at the uh, QP doll stand at the county fair. You get three for a quarter. <laughs> Well, he knocked him down in the third one. It was amazing to watch after the warning, and no one cared. Bang, got him. Nothing won the count to J.P. or in CBA.
the humbling experience of learning how to receive the knuckleball. It's something that JP is going through now. His on the job tutorial with that man continues. San Diego Padre right hander Luke Gregerson is up in the bullpen for Team USA. All right, Dick, he's getting pretty close to the pitch limit. The pitch limit does allow you, however, even when you reach it, to finish an at bat. So we'll see exactly just what is expected of R.A. moving forward, and Aaron Zibby is straightened up. The fifth strikeout by Samuel Duduno tonight. Uh, this is another one where the U.S. batter thought the pitch was outside. Let's check it out. Santana is set up outside, hits the target, but he, his target is actually outside of the strike zone. Look at that. That's lined up with the chalk in the other batter's box. He hits the target. In case where a catcher helps you get a call, he even pulls it back in a little bit. I always find it ironic when Greg Maddox is in the ballpark and you see a strike called like that. <laughs> Greg, of course, along with uh, John Smoltz and Tom Glavin particularly. Glavin more so than the, the other two. Always experimenting with the parameters of the strike zone that way. The strike zone was silly putty in their hands. They could stretch it better <laughs> than anybody else. I think baseball actually had to crack down. You talk about Bob Gibson being so good, they had to shorten the mound. I think Maddox and Glavin were so good stretching the strike zone, there was a crackdown on that horizontal strike zone. A ball and no strikes that count to Willie Bluquist. You're good enough to change the rules. The way the game is administered, you're real good. Jones is running. And Luke shoots it foul. That's the first time we've seen them start a runner here. He actually gets a moving lead here, a hit and run play here. He takes a quick look in. Luke trying to shoot it the other way. As I said, the U.S. has been fairly aggressive on the bases throughout this tournament, and generally early in counts. It's preferred to start runners 1 0. Sometimes first pitch. Jones runs again. Blitquist swings and misses, and the throw is offline. It's a stolen base for Adam Jones. Well, I, said, I actually like the straight steal here anyway. This is another hit and run, but we talked about the Duno and his time to the plate. You can run on. Here, watch. There's no slide step here. He's got that knee lift. This is a hit and run. You saw Jones peek in. I still think the straight steal is definitely in order at the right time against the Duno. So a ball and two strikes on Willie Bloomquist now. Swing and a miss. Six strikeouts for Samuel Duduno tonight. Watch this ball break down away under the bat of Willie Bloomquist. Right, he gets really good rotation on these breaking balls. Look at that spin. That's tremendous rotation. Breaking balls are pretty much all about the speed of the rotation on the ball. And if you got long fingers like the Duno does, Pedro Martinez was this way, you can spin it a lot faster. Here's Jimmy Rollins now. Duduno's career strikeout high during the regular season is nine. He punched out nine Seattle Mariners in a seven inning win on August 29th. After the single back to back strikeouts here, Rollins a strikeout victim back in the second. The 
watch where Jimmy Rollins stands in the batter's box. He loves crowding the plate. I asked him about that. He said, I just like to feel the ball close to me. I'm comfortable with the ball close to me. Ball with two strikes. We were doing a little math work, Tom, earlier in the tournament as you take a look at Brandon Phillips on deck. And Jimmy Rollins has a couple more years left on the the redo on the contract, re up for three years. He'll be entering year two in 2013. When you do the math, sometime around when that contract expires, perhaps mid to late 2014, he'll become the Phillies' all time hit leader. That is quite a mantle. Really credit to obviously the talent, but also the way he takes care of himself. One of the more durable players in baseball. Playing obviously a position that puts a lot of wear and tear on the body. San Dudo around the pitch limit and on his next offering, a swing and a miss, and he strikes out the side in the fourth. And Budweiser, great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Big crowd at Marlins Park tonight. Technically a sold out crowd. And they have been treated to a good one. Plugging away 1 1. The winner gets a ticket all the way to San Francisco for the championship round in the World Baseball Classic. They'll join the Kingdom of the Netherlands and Japan. That last chair will be filled. Tomorrow, when the loser of this game matches up with Puerto Rico, and we'll have live coverage tomorrow night at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Alejandro de Aza starts things in the Dominican half of the fifth. De Aza, Reyes, and Tejada. Let's bounce down to Hosmer. He's got to get there quickly and avoid Dickey at the same time. There's one away. Well, Matt, you know when you play Monopoly, you love to have that get out of jail card. Well, right here, get out of jail card is his curveball. Every time he was in trouble, he was able to throw this pitch to get strikes, sometimes out of the strike zone by getting hitters to chase that breaking ball. There was the bat with Brandon Phillips. We didn't see in that sequence in the second inning where he actually shook off the fastball from Carlos Santana, went to that breaking ball, and ever since then, that's been the go-to pitch. Trouble early commanding the fastball, Curveball has been the pitch to get him out of trouble every time. Jose Reyes now with one away. He's hitless tonight. Samuel Deduno's 80th and final pitch was the one that he struck out Jimmy Rollins with. Reyes hit a hard time buckling to the knuckler there. Hey, you don't know where it's going. Is it coming towards me, away from me? Like a 95 mile an hour fastball, you have some time to think about it. Which way do I go? All right, Dickey with four pitches left on the pitch count, and again, he can't finish it at bat. Could potentially get through this inning. Did that work out nice? A soft liner to right. And he will, in fact, be able to finish this inning if he can get the next man, Miguel Tejada. Kelvin Herrera will be the next in for the Dominican Republic. Wait a second. Did you just call a 1 2 3 inning, Matt? I know. I, I said I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> Miguel Tejada has singled tonight. You know, Tony Pena had the same situation with Kelvin Herrera that Joe Torre has had with Luke Gregerson and Tim Collins. He's got to get him some work. It was pretty much a certainty that Herrera was going to get in there tonight at some point.
Here comes Greg Maddox. That last pitch, Ferrari Dickey. Was number 79. And I'm not sure if this is Greg just refreshing our array of the situation. Hey, if you can get this guy, you're done. If not, we got to come get you. It doesn't hurt to just make sure that there's no gray areas to know that no matter what here, this could be your last batter. It does seem to be odd timing to go out there on an 0-2 count with two outs and the base is empty. And he also could have been buying some time here in case that Tejada would reach base. They would have to take Dickey out of the game. Have to be prepared for that situation in case he does not retire him. Yeah, it's Robinson Cano do up next. I'm not sure Gregerson was the guy they would have wanted ideally for him. So that would make a lot of sense to buy Collins some time. And then you can fool around with Tejada now for a couple of pitches as well. Want to fool around too much, though. You don't want Cano coming up with anybody on base, even if it's first base. No doubt. A ball and two strikes. It's a two and two now. A one-one tie, top of the fifth. The winner advances out of the second round and gets to San Francisco. The loser has to play Puerto Rico tomorrow in an elimination game. The 2 2. Tejada pops it up. Dickey does complete a 1 2 3 fifth. He completes five innings tonight. We're still tied 1 1 in the middle of the fifth as we send you back to the MLB Network studios and Matt Yaloff. Tie as we complete the fifth inning break to the bottom of the inning we go. This has been about as evenly matched as we could have guessed. As R.A. Dickey completes his five through 82 pitches again, a little higher than the count because he was allowed to finish that last at bat. Samuel Deduno also finished with 80 pitches. Both starters were magnificent tonight. Kelvin Herrera takes over on the mound for Team DR. So the pitch counts play a role tonight, Tom. Both R.A. Dickey and Samuel Deduno, had this been the middle of May, the middle of June, they would still be out there in the fifth and sixth innings tonight. No reason to take them out of the game. Both really in command of the other team's lineups, absolutely. But in this case, this early in the season, protecting the pitcher's health. That's the reason why we have these pitch counts. Brandon Phillips, Ryan Braun, and Joe Maurer for Team USA. Kelvin Herrera making his first WBC appearance this year. 23 year old hard throwing right hander hard enough to throw 99 miles an hour on that last offering uh, Kansas City Royals property. He's one of the hardest throwers in all of baseball. No question about that. He likes to elevate those fastballs up there. Why not. He's also able to run that fastball hard into the hands of right handed hitters. Missed almost two years in 2009 and 2010 with a stress fracture in his right elbow. Let's that one go 99 miles an hour and misses high. His average fastball velocity is just a tick shy of 99. Got the veteran Octavio Dotel up behind him. Terrific start by Ari Dickey and Sam Deduno tonight. On the ground to third. Tejada's got it and Phillips is retired to start the last of the fifth. That's what happens when you gear up for 99 and you see 82. And needing to protect as well, get the roll over to third base. Both bullpens have held up really well so far in the tournament. It's been a big reason that they're here tonight with the winner moving on to San Francisco this weekend.
One out base is empty now for Ryan Braun. We talk about that bullpen. You see Herrera with premium gas in the game right now. Dotel warming up. Dotel, Santiago Casilla, Pedro Strope ahead of Fernando Rodney. They haven't allowed a run yet in the tournament. 12 and two thirds innings. Two balls and no strikes. Kelvin Herrera last pitched on Thursday against Venezuela. The ground ball to shortstop Reyes gets Braun two away. So that's that's the backstory behind the urgency of his getting in there tonight. Talking about a week between appearances. And the Royals were very much aware of that. Yeah, Two away now for Joe Mauer. Sorry, Matt. We talk a lot about protecting the starting pitchers with the pitch counts, and making sure guys don't work too much this early in spring. But the flip side of that is you don't want guys getting rust on them either. Trying to find that balance with both starting pitchers and relief pitchers. Mauer has singled and grounded out tonight. Team USA playing without David Wright this evening, their offensive leader throughout the tournament. Back soreness kept David on the shelf tonight. And as Heidi Watney reported earlier, he's going to go to Port St. Lucie tomorrow to check in with the Mets training staff. It's just a precautionary measure. Fastball misses into Joe Mauer, 2 and 1. So Giancarlo Stanton bats fifth in the spot Wright had occupied throughout the tournament. Two and two. That was the swing there for Joe Bauer where he was thinking long ball. Talk about his two strike approach. When Joe gets in fastball counts ahead of the count, you will see him take bigger swings. That's one right there. That last season, the Metrodome with his home, number, home run numbers really went up. Really a function of hitting according to the count where he let loose with bigger swings. Now he goes back to two strike mode right here. Two, three, and their half of the fifth inning. We are still tied one apiece. To the World Baseball Classic in Miami, the United States and Dominican Republic tied at one. Now, before the game, Joe Torre told Tony Pena during batting practice that he needed to talk to Robinson Cano. He said this very straight face. He said he needed Pena to send Cano over to his office after batting practice. And then he laughed and said, because I'm going to lock him in a closet for this game. Back to you, Matt Vasquez. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think that worked. That plan never was executed. You can understand the uh, the desire to keep Robinson Cano away from the field tonight, however, as we welcome you back. Top of the sixth inning. Cano has been a one-man wrecking crew. A tournament best 13 hits, 23 total bases. He'll take swings against the new pitcher for Team USA. San Diego Padre right-hander Luke Gregerson taking over in the sixth. Yeah, you saw Collins warming up the left-hander, and you wonder, bringing a right-hander against Robinson Cano. Well, Gregerson really doesn't matter too much. The splits are pretty much the same. 216 against right-handers, 214 against left-handers. Cano and Carnacion and Ramirez, a 1-1 ball game. It's 
some pretty dramatic splits for Robinson last year. The 359 against right handed pitching led all the baseball. A ball and two strikes. You know, it's interesting that these players they enjoy watching the other games on TV when they're not playing and Ryan Braun has been a fan watching Robinson Cano play and he had a good line he said he's just got that look about him like he owns the game and it's true Robinson's got that look sometimes like he's already done the crossword puzzle knows all the answers and then you give him the crossword puzzle blank and he's all right I got this yeah it's like he knows the answers if there were some knowing glances like that exchanged in the Dominicans first matchup on Tuesday where he just kind of signaled to the rest of the folks on the field that he was better than anybody out there. I got this. Yeah. And he has backed that up with a couple of home runs already in the tournament. March 10th in San Juan. Dominican Republic down. A game tying solo shot of Jose De La Torre. DR went on to win that one. And then Tuesday against Italy. He got to Tiago De Silva. And that would key the comeback for the Dominican Republic still undefeated in the tournament. Yeah, that one against Italy that came with dinner service on it. That was a long distance flight right there. The one two from Gregerson. It was a look in the in the eye of of Robinson Cano that seemed to disappear last year in the postseason however. He was not himself nor were many of his teammates. Uh, that was one of the more stunning things I've seen in postseason play because to me his approach and his swing really can be as slump proof as if there is such a thing in baseball. Hit a couple of balls up hard early in that postseason didn't get results and then things really went south. A ball and two strikes to him here leading off the sixth. And with so much of the pop perhaps missing in the Bronx in April, Cano will be leaned on rather heavily come opening day. There's been a lot of talk of injuries and age sapping some of the magic out of the pinstripes. I think uh, the oft used quote, Tales of My Demise, are greatly exaggerated. I tend to believe the Yankees will be just fine in large part because of Robinson Cano but there's been a lot of talk a rod hurt Tex hurt Cano fishes and strikes out to start the sixth inning this was how dramatic the drop off was once we went to the postseason last year Cano finished the regular season with terrific numbers as per usual but in the fall in nine games hit under a dollar with four runs batted in and virtually no power. I thought it was really interesting the other day Matt, to give people a sense of the way guys are invested in this tournament at a press conference they asked him obviously he won a world championship in 2009 with the Yankees which is more exciting playing in the World Series or the WBC. As I did he took a little pregnant pause before answering and he laughed and he said well about the same played it diplomatically yeah but even that answer tells you this game is competed at a very high level. Oh and one to Edwin and Carnacion. That's popped up. And drifting out of play. You know the, the the term exhibition games has been thrown around regarding this tournament and I there couldn't be a, in a more inaccurate way to describe what's been happening here. Yeah I could agree with more with you Matt it's, it's the intensity it's the emotions. It's playing for something really big on the line you're talking about national pride. The ball and two strikes to Encarnacion.
after tomorrow one of these two teams is going to disperse and send players back to major league camps the winner moves on to San Francisco and keeps going. Whoever loses gets Puerto Rico tomorrow in an elimination game. Full count down three and two. Well, I think the next ball Gregerson throws above the knees would be the first one. Strikes are at the knees and his balls are right below it. Three two pitch found away again. You know we talk about the intensity here and the way this this tournament's received in the stands and the, the players have certainly noticed the same thing. I mean you pick Luke Gregerson up out of Padres camp. In Peoria Arizona where he you know is riding around on a skateboard get there early put in your work and then go play nine holes. And you throw a guy right into this type of tournament environment, and it dials it up really quickly. On the ground to third, Bloomquist with a nice play. The throw is wild, however. A one out base runner in the DR6. And it looked like once he does the spin here, kind of lost his bearings. Actually, did get set there, but that's way offline. Again, hasn't had a lot of reps. I'm sure, you take your ground balls every day, but in terms of game speed, hasn't been out in the field a lot during this WBC. Willie played only 11 games at third base with last year's Arizona Diamondbacks. The E5 puts a base runner aboard now in front of Hanley Ramirez, whose big solo home run in the second tied the game at one. Rival squaring off here with a runner aboard. Hanley had a couple of plate appearances last year against Luke Gregerson as a Dodger. 0 for 4 against him career. I mean, it's, these dudes have not stopped in the stands. <laughs> it's exciting. I mean, they're, they're guys burning more calories in the stands tonight than they're all on the field. Right about non stop. Even between innings, it's loud here. Good slider swung out of mist. Yeah, obviously here he's looking for something to roll over. Ramirez on the slider down and away. Speed up his bat a little bit, get him out front. Gets the swing and miss. A couple of different options he's got here, but the main option is to make sure this pitch is out of the strike zone to Hanley Ramirez. Zone. I'm going to paint right here. A little off speed pitch down and away. It doesn't get any better than that right on the black. What's this here? Ah. Got a lot of the plate. Two strikeouts in the inning for Gregerson. Now Nelson Cruz, who has doubled and fly to center tonight. Perhaps if any Dominican Republic hitter, it's Nelson Cruz that's had the most experience on the grandest of stages. Terrific postseason success with the Texas Rangers. This foul pop trying to get out of play and does.
And that's to take nothing away from what Robinson Cano has been able to do in the fall. But Cruz of course a part of the back to back AL championship teams in Texas. A record setting postseason in 2010. In 2011 that is when he was named ALCS MVP. 14 postseason home runs in 34 games. Another good slider swung out of missed. Yeah, right here. He got away with a slider on that previous pitch. Too much of the plate, but this one perfectly located. Gregerson is that rare pitcher that uses his fastball to set up a slider. Rolled out to shortstop. Gregerson impressive and route to a scoreless top of the sixth inning. Check it right here on MLB Network. In fact, Harold Reynolds just ducked into the broadcast booth. He will join us for tomorrow's telecast. And uh, he just whispered to Tom and I that he had to travel all the way to Florida to get away from Brian Kenny for a little while. <laughs> Giancarlo Stanton leads things off in the Team U.S. half of the sixth. Stanton, Hosmer, and Jones. I like the way you put that, Matt. It sounds like a parlor game. If you were in a fight, would you rather have a fungo or a calculator? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we'd be surprised at the answers yes. that we'll get on that one. I know there's a lot of people lining up behind that calculator. Stanton has walked and singled tonight. After a hitless start to the tournament, cashed in with two base hits on Tuesday in the win versus Puerto Rico. Eric Hosmer waiting next. A 1 1 ball game. A run on five hits for both teams tonight. Uh, Big swing and a miss. Danger pitch right there at 3 and 1. Got the pitch he was looking for, but Herrera got it in and up just enough. That ball's out over the plate. Bar patrons out there in left center field were on alert, but got it inside and up. <laughs> Popped up way up. Dave Kingman pop up. Look out for the back. Carlos Santana stays with it. If that ball had gone up another 100 feet through the roof, the blimp would have caught it. We'd like to thank the MetLife blimp, Snoopy One, and its all star team of pilots, mechanical engineers, and ground crew that makes tonight's special aerial coverage of the 2014 13 World Baseball Classic possible. Easy for me to say. Seven straight retired by Dominican pitching. Here's Eric Hosmer now. So the first line in from each bullpen. Herrera for the Dominican Republic. And Gregerson for Team USA. Both very effective. And both having success with their own disparate styles. Two balls and a strike. There's a one hopper, a hard smash for Reyes. He gathers it in, throws wildly, and Hosmer's aboard. Tough play. And they're going to hang an error on Jose Reyes. Yeah, tough play. You're right, but one in which he should have completed. The hard part is right here. It's just stopping the ball, gets a nice bounce, and then just the quick flip without moving the feet to first base. Doesn't make an accurate throw. 
Right here, he's thinking, I gotta hurry now. Just didn't get his feet set, didn't think he had time to set his feet. As a Marlin last year, Jose Reyes tied a career high with 18 errors. That's his first of the tournament. Here's Adam Jones now. Octavio Dotel is up in the bullpen for Team DR. Second time we've seen him begin an assignment. Ball and a strike to Adam Jones. This being double elimination here in round two of the tournament in Miami, and with the U.S. and Puerto Rico both winning their first matchup, this is not an elimination game, but to the winner, the spoils, a ticket to San Francisco in the championship round. If the loser of this game is to join him, join them. They're going to have to play and win one more, and that'll be tomorrow against Puerto Rico. And the best way to think about this round is the number two. You get that second win, you're in. You get that second loss, you're out. J.P. Aaron CB awaiting on deck. Jones with a jam shot back of second base. Cano retreats to make the catch, and there were two away. Boy, Herrera has really been able to run that fastball in on the hands of the right-handed hitters. We talked about getting in on Stanton. Watch this pitch run in on Adam Jones at 97. So here is Aaron Sebia now with the runner aboard and two gone. JP is singled and struck out tonight. Score to sixth. Back to back score to settings by the hard throwing right hander. He's all right backing up. Well, that's good. Oh, that's too much. Come on, get on there. Get down. Don't let him charge. That last pitch, I think it was a sinker. Knuckleball? Fastball. That was a slider there. Throw one center in here. Don't worry about it. Hi, boy, buddy. How does Boa not come out of this event without a David Sunflower Seeds contract? <laughs> <laughs> Who's having more fun than Nobody. Larry Boa? Not a single person right now. A pitching change. The Kansas City Royal theme is further served. Kelvin Herrera was terrific on the mound for Team Dominican Republic. Two scoreless innings. And fellow Royal reliever Tim Collins enters the line score. Here in the seventh. Santana, Nanita, and De Aza, bottom of the order for Team DR. In the first offer at home to Carlos Santana's lined into left field, a base hit. Carlos Santana, two for three tonight. So a first pitch single here greets Tim Collins and now it's Nanita. See if the bunt is in play right here. He squares around and fouls it away. 
This is just the second time that the Dominican Republic lineup has put its leadoff hitter on base. You'll recall back in the third, Deaza walked to lead off the inning against R.A. Dickey and was promptly picked off. Sometimes a manager will take a bunt off and you see someone go out of bunt the way that Nanita did right there. Just didn't have conviction. The bat was actually behind the plate. You got to get that bat out in front of the plate, give yourself up. You've got a guy up there who's not comfortable bunting. He'll let you know by the way he goes after the ball. Bunting is all about having conviction about getting it down. That means getting that bat barrel out in front of the plate. Craig Maddox comes down for a visit. Steve Ciszek is up in the bullpen for Team USA. Tim Collins' only appearance in the WBC came on Friday against Mexico. He worked a third of an inning, gave up a hit and a walk. And he was not sharp in that game. It was not sharp in a previous appearance in one of their exhibition games. Remember, we still are only in the second week of March. Yeah. We're expecting these guys all to be in regular season conditioning in terms of arm strength, command, and all those elements. It's not going to happen for everybody. Nanita gives up the bunt early and drops it down. Hosmer gets to it. And the Phillips covering, they get the out. The sacrifice works for the DR, however. Santana in scoring position now with one away. Yeah, this is a much better job. Look, he's already in position with the bat out in front of the plate, the barrel pointed at the shortstop. Listen, you're not surprising anybody. We know you're bunting. Greg Maddox is better than anybody else at this. He, as soon as he stepped in the batter's box, he'd get into bunting position, saying, listen, you know I'm bunting, I know I'm bunting, and I'm still going to get it down. So now the number nine hitter, Alejandro De Anza. With a couple of years in the big leagues under his belt, and no swing on the Diaz pitch, I don't think anybody's worried about Tim Collins. But I think the fair way to say what's happened here at the World Baseball Classic is that others in the group of relievers are closer to midseason form than where Team USA thinks Tim Collins is right now. And again, that we talked before the game, Luke Gregerson and Tim Collins. We're going to pitch in this game. It wasn't circumstances so much as it was schedule that would dictate their appearance. with all of its offensive firepower and considering their win over Italy on Tuesday are now just two for 14 with runners in scoring position here in Miami. Jose Reyes hitless tonight. They'll intentionally pass the switch hitter. Guessing man making a change for Miguel Tejada. Cishek is hot in the U.S. bullpen. Cishek has thrown the ball well in this tournament. You can see if Tony Payne would counter punch with Eric Ibar, a left handed hitter. But again, we talked about Tejada being in this lineup because of what he means to baseball in that country. Ball four to Reyes. Here comes Joe Torre, and he'll have the hook in his pocket. They're going to make the move to Cishek. A pitching change. Runners aboard with two gone. Here we are in mid-March, and we have mid illusion in a matchup. After six plus innings tonight, Steve Cishek is the new pitcher for Team USA. He'll get Miguel Tejada with runners at first and second and two gone. The six time All Star in 2002 AL MVP is one for three tonight. 
And in a tough spot, Steve Ciszek particularly tough against right-handed hitters. In 2012, limited them to just a 185 batting average. He's got multiple weapons against right-handers. You see the back door, two-seamer right there. He'll go front door with it as a slur that kind of works away from the right-hander and also a really good changeup. Santana and Reyes aboard. Chopper back to the mound. And nothing in the Dominican half of the seventh. A sold out, noisier crowd by the pitch, up and stretching in the midst of a 1 1 tie. Of about 35,000. Now, Team USA has this special American flag in their dugout. It's a gift from U.S. soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan who flew this flag over their camp during the World Baseball Classic in 2006 and 2009. They sent the flag to Joe Torrey as a good luck token for the team, and Torrey has had it in the dugout with them every single game. Talk about American pride. Matt? Yeah, Heidi, thanks. We spent a lot of time talking about. Uh, a lot of the other countries and how proud they are to support their teams and nations in this event. Same can certainly be said for Team USA. A pitching change for the Dominicans. Kelvin Herrera was terrific over two innings tonight, and he yields to the veteran right-hander and Major League Baseball record holder Octavio Dotel. A record 13 organizations pitched for at the big league level. They used to call it the Mike Morgan Highway in referencing a player that would change uniforms frequently. Now it's the Octavio Dotel Expressway. A lot of uniforms he's won over the course, a lot of uniforms he's worn over the course of his career. Willie Bloomquist the first to face him and he pops it up. Tire infield converges and it's Jose Reyes that makes the catch. Really one thing hasn't changed. He goes right after you with fastballs. Reyes, this one was up there for a while. He's called it all the way. I mean, this is a guy late into his 30s who's really kept velocity, still at 92, 93. Really hasn't gotten much of a trick pitch. About 80% fastballs he pumps in. One gone, here's Jimmy Rollins. Jay Smooth is 0 for 3 so far tonight. And take strike one. Heidi mentioned the crowd tonight. 34,366. And that makes this crowd one of the top five crowds in the brief history of Marlins Park. I'm also going to go out on a limb and say it's the loudest. Yes, I think I would agree with that. Without any kind of backing on that, we don't have a sound meter here. We're not going to give you a decimals count. We're not going to feed the audio into the shredder and have it discussed on MLB Now. <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and say it. It's the loudest crowd ever here. You got to work the shredder in there at least once, don't you? Try it. <laughs> Jimmy Rollins is hitless in his career against Octavio Dotel. 0 for 7 with three strikeouts. I mean, Dotel has been a matchup problem for a number of these U.S. hitters over the years, as we see one of the last affectations of 1982, the wave going around the ballpark. That's a soft liner for Cano and two away. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of the World Baseball Classic Incorporated and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. You internet pirates you. Brandon Phillips tonight one for three. He scored the U.S. run in the first on a bases loaded walk to Eric Hosmer. Samuel DeDuno was terrific tonight. So was Kelvin Herrera. And two up, two down so far for Octavio Dotel. I 
think Tom that Octavio Dotel was going to be on this roster regardless. But it works out pretty well the fact that he has amazing numbers against almost everybody in this U.S. lineup. You see where he sets up on the rubber there. That that rubber is 24 inches long. He can use every single centimeter of it. You're talking about a stage of the game where he wants to stay away. The previous pitch he had missed inside, missed his target by a lot. You see Santana setting up away. Don't want to make any mistakes here on the inside of the plate. I know the park's big, but you've got a guy like Brandon Phillips, two outs, bases empty. Anything middle in, he can lose it in a hurry. The top three hitters in the U.S. lineup for their careers. Three for 23. 15 strikeouts against Octavio Dotel. Full count now. And as much as Jimmy Rollins and Brandon Phillips have had their trouble against him, nobody hates facing this guy more than the on-deck hitter for the U.S. Yeah, that's the case right there again with two outs and nobody on base, tie game. You play for one big swing right there. Out of the strike zone, yes, but sitting up, fastball, you get it. You become unhinged when you see it. Ryan Braun on deck. The full count pitch. Off the fist to an infield pop for Cano and no trouble at all for the veteran in the seventh. Being good. The heavy hitting middle of the order here for Team DR in the top of the eighth inning. Robinson Cano, Edwin Encarnacion, and Hanley Ramirez. Steve Ciszek recorded the final out in the seventh. He continues in the eighth. Behind 0 and 2. None of the games in the tournament thus far have exercised the nuance in the extra innings rule for the World Baseball Classic. A swing and a miss. Ciszek gets Cano to strike out, opening the eighth. That's an impressive job by Ciszek right there, a red hot hitter. Just set up by the pitches before that, going away. Cano with two strikes, trying to protect, just can't catch up with it. Hard throwing Orioles right hander Pedro Strokes up in the bullpen. Here's Edwin Encarnacion now. Not that I expect us to get into the uh, late stages of extra innings tonight. However, it is one of the uh, one of the little nuances that makes World Baseball Classic play a little different. Jam shot bouncer to shortstop. Rollins is up with it, and Carnacion is gone. They're two quick outs for Steve Ciszek in the eighth. If extra innings in the World Baseball Classic get as far as the 13th beginning in that inning teams will start out each half inning with runners at first and second. So. Think of that almost as you would a college football game. where in overtime each offense gets a shot to begin a possession at the 35 yard line. Give it a little head start. Nobody wants to kill a pitching staff in this thing. Well, that's exactly right. You know, if you're involved in youth tournaments out there, they call it the California tiebreaker. Same principle behind it, just to save arms. You don't want to get in a situation where you're in the 20th inning and you're extending people. Just reminded by one of our uh, University of Missouri apologists in my ear that college football overtime rules, they begin at the 25 yard line. Well, excuse me. <laughs> Jeremy Affeld is up for Team USA. A matchup of former Marlin teammates here, and 0 and 2 is the count against Hanley Ramirez. When you're wrong, you find out right away, don't you? No such thing oh, yeah. anymore as blissful ignorance. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> they tell you, they tweet it. A TP your house. A cold strike three. 
Steve Ciszek with a seven pitch all business top of the eighth. Twenty five years and is thrilled to be a part of the 2013 World Baseball Classic. Bullpens have been terrific tonight and Pedro Strope is the latest inserted into the line score. He'll work the bottom half of the eighth. Well, I know Matt we talked a lot about the firepower and the offense on the Dominican team the bullpen has been a big talk of this tournament as well. Octavio Dotel. Strope. Santiago Casillas is next and Fernando Rodney behind them so far 13 and two thirds scoreless innings for those four right handers. Ron Bauer and Stanton for Team USA. Fred Kimbrell is up for the Americans. Well, the U.S. bats with four hits in their first seven plate appearances against Samuel Deduno. Not only did uh, the bullpens pick things up, Deduno himself really turned things around. It didn't look as though he may stick around tonight. I remember talking about how we saw a bunch of relievers go down to the corner as early as the first inning. The leash was going to be short, but Deduno was great. Well, no bigger pitch than the last pitch of the first inning, the 30th pitch of that inning, getting Adam Jones looking. With a comebacker, Strokes got it. There's one away. The two bullpens tonight have combined in six innings to allow one base hit. Watch this. Now, if he catches this ground ball like a shortstop, there's a reason. He's a former shortstop converted to a pitcher with an arm like that. Why not? Back, Matt, you can say that as a pitcher, part of what makes him effective is the way that he throws. He's what they call a short armor. You'll see this from converted players a lot who didn't grow up pitching. And the arm swing is much shorter. Here's Joe Mauer now with one away. A lot of pitchers will take the ball out of the glove and swing it down. You'll see the way he takes the ball out of his glove and it really won't go much farther below his belt. And a quick arm. Craig Kimbrell, very similar. Bauer's got a base hit back up the middle. It's been a great tournament for Joe Bauer. Eight for 18. And now Giancarlo Stanton. For Team USA, that's their first base hit since Adam Jones led off the fourth with a single. First pitch slider misses the corner. Stanton has singled, walked, and popped out tonight. For all the power in this U.S. lineup, and we went on the air touting it this evening, Tom, just six singles this evening for the Americans. It's been a hard time finding the long ball in this lineup. There is a lot of power here, but it has not played in this tournament yet. David Wright, sorry, David Wright, of course, with that big grand slam. That's been it. Neither lineup has really been able to cash in with runners on tonight. Stroke comes inside to find a strike, and it's three and one. Eric Hosmer next, a left handed batter waits on deck with one away. Real interesting pitch coming up right here. 3 1. Six mile an hour fastball. Very similar to Herrera against Stick. With that high heat running in on the hands of the hitter. The 
payoff pitch. Got him looking. Uh, just a great job by Stroke. Falling behind a great fastball pitcher. Watch the way this ball is going to tail back over the plate. 97 miles an hour. It's one where you give up on thinking that's a ball all the way. It becomes a strike at the very end. I tell you, I mean, some of the histrionics among the Dominican relievers, <laughs> it's the kind of stuff that would make the late Jose Lima proud. Hey, perfectly understandable. We saw Ciszek getting the last out of that last inning with nobody else on base, giving you a major league fist pump. Eric Hosmer with the runner aboard. Skipper's getting animated. Starting the lawnmower right there. <laughs> Two to Hosmer. That's just nasty. Watch this breaking ball just bury down and in on Hosmer. A swing and a high drive. Playable in right for Cruz. And the shot is retired in the eighth. The intensity builds to the ninth, still tied in one. With a spot in the championship round on the line, the U.S. and the Dominican Republic head to the ninth. Couldn't be any closer. Here's how the bracket looks tonight. The loser this evening will play Puerto Rico tomorrow in an elimination game. The winner moves on. The loser goes home. Whoever wins tonight gets the ticket all the way to San Francisco. And we'll have a game here on Saturday to determine who goes as the winner and who goes as the runner-up. Nelson Cruz picks on the first Craig Kimbrell pitch and lines it sharply into right. He's trying for second and is in safely. The go-ahead running scoring position to start the night. First ball, fastball hitting. He got what he was looking for. Terrific play here by Stanton that allowed him to cut this ball off. as all that he can to try to get the out on second base. Cruz thinking two all the way out of the box. That might be another base if he doesn't snare that with that dive. Carlos Santana now. He shows punt and takes a pitch. Throw to second. Who's back safely? Think about this for just a moment, and as we take a look at Craig Kimbrell and officially bring him in. Last year, 63 games, 42 saves. Sony PlayStation style numbers. He gave up one double last year. One double last year. He gives up a first pitch double here to Nelson Cruz. We saw Santana show bunt on the first pitch, swinging right there. No sacrifice bunts in his career. When had just been showing that drop, Willie Bloom pushed in a little bit here. His job here, obviously, try to pull the ball to the right side, get the runner over. 
Ball and two strikes the count to Carlos Santana. He's got two of the seven Dominican hits tonight. Fernando Rodney's up in the bullpen. Well, when you talk about PlayStation numbers, the one that really jumps out of that strikeout number, striking out virtually half the batters he faced in the major leagues last year. Remarkable. And obviously, that's on his mind right here on a one and two count. Two and two. In addition to allowing just the one double last year, and I wonder just what went wrong for Craig Kimball to have even allowed it. He gave up one base hit all year with runners in scoring position. One. Still two and two to Carlos Santana. And when I said Santana's job is to try to get him over here, I think against a guy like Kimbrough, you do whatever you can, even if you have to hit the ball the other way. Perfect world, yes, you pull the ball. I mean, he's not a guy who hits the ball much the other way anyway. He's a left-handed hitter, only seven opposite field hits last year. But I don't think you can try to guide the ball against Craig Kimball. You're just trying for contact. Santana wants the time to think and collect himself. Santana sticking around. You see, Aaron Sebia wants to talk to him about that, make sure they're on the same page. Could go to that breaking ball. He's really gone after him with fastballs here. The one issue with the breaking ball is that's a rollover pitch, and that would produce a ground ball to the right side of the field. They risk going for the strikeout, but the downside is that ground ball to the right side of the field. And there it was. Watch him get out in front of this. I mean, you got to be geared up for 97 here. It's that rollover I'm talking about. Now, this one's a foul ball, obviously. Here comes Greg Maddox. Yeah, I think he wants to talk to him, too. Just make sure everybody's on the same page. And I know with Greg Maddox, nobody worked pitches ahead and thought them through better than Greg Maddox. It's not always about the one pitcher throwing. It's about the sequence of pitches. Bottom of the order, Nanita and Diazza next. Getting the next group of hitters important for Craig Kimbrough for obvious reasons with the runner in scoring position. But if Jose Reyes has a chance to bat here, he's five for six career against Craig Kimbrough. Nobody has that kind of success against the Atlanta Clover. On the ground to second base, Phillips has it. The go ahead run 90 feet away with one away in the ninth. And what an amazing story this would be for the Dominican Republic. If Ricardo Nanita, uh, who is now being pulled back, before we could even set the stage, the only player on the field tonight that has never played in the big leagues, Nanita, a 10 year minor leaguer, and he will not be given the chance. Tony Pena is going to his bench. And Eric Ibar, the switch hitting Los Angeles Angel, will be tapped to try to hit a fly ball here. Well, there's a lot of things at play here. You're talking about a guy who led the major leagues last year at bunt hits with 18. Can't rule that out, can't rule out squeeze, can't rule out safety squeeze. The kind of speed that puts pressure on infielders. I like this move by Tony Pena.
Derek Ibar hit two sack flies last year as an angel. It's not the kind of thing he's used to doing. The infield's going to come in for Team USA. Ibar swinging away, fouls off the first pitch. What a suggestion you're making, Mr. Perducci, that the Dominican Republic is going to try to push across the potential winning run here in the ninth inning in a 1 1 tie with a trip to San Francisco on the line with a squeeze play. Stranger things have happened. Listen, you're facing a guy who strikes out every other batter that he faces. You've got a guy at the plate who's not really a middle of the order run producer where you expect sacrifice fly. Yep. Not to mention, Craig Campbell did not allow a sack fly last year. One and one. The last thing on anybody's mind right now is that this is spring training. Forgotten is the fact that we're in the middle of March. Feels like October. There's no doubt. A strike to Ibar. He can't believe it. You talk about backdoor breaking balls. <laughs> Doesn't get much more backdoor than this. Watch this. Yeah. That's a, that's, Watch how Aaron CB catches this ball. That's so backdoor. It's out of the house and in the garage. That's in the mud room. Ibar had a pretty good beef there. Boy, that pitch really changes the at bat. You know, no pitch changes in at bat when you look at on base percentage batting average more than the 1 1 pitch. The difference between 1 and 2 and 2 and 1 is the biggest difference in baseball, and that call just swung the at bat towards Kimball's favor. Ivar with a base hit to right. The Dominicans have taken a 2 to 1 lead. Seven on the hands, and Ibar turns it around. Now it's Alejandro de Aza. It's one thing to see an entire roster come out on the field to win a game when the ninth inning, the bottom of the ninth, walk off style. It's another thing entirely to see an entire roster celebrate on the field when a guy scores a run to make it two to one at the top of the ninth. This is beyond October. Wow, we can clip that off into a promo right there. <laughs> One ball and one strike to Deaza. Ibar's running and it's fouled away. The Dominicans earned their first lead of the night here at the top of the night. Team USA will trail as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Fred Kimber hoping to keep it just two to one. Ibar runs again. Deaza swings and misses. Throw down to second it is too late. Rollins tried to follow with the tag, but Ibar stayed hooked on the base. Kimbrel's like a lot of closers. Easy to run on. You don't get many base runners against the top flight closers. A lot of them, though, they'll let, almost let you have a base. They're not worried about slide steps, being quick. They're all about getting the out, primarily by strikeout. 
Well, here's that matchup that we just spoke of. Jose Reyes, five for six against Craig Kimbrell. Nothing and one to the four time All Star who is hitless, 0 for 3 with an intentional walk on his line tonight. Nobody has more hits against Craig Kimber than Jose Reyes. And there's one more. Ivar scores, and it's 3 to 1 Dominicano. Kimbrel's got a base open. A right hander on deck with a hitter who's got great success against him. Challenge fastball, and Reyes is up to the challenge. Oh, man. That dugout is going absolutely bonkers. That's going to be all for Craig Kimbrel. one lead for the Dominican Republic and just to put some context on what's just happened here in the top of the ninth inning Craig Kimbrell last year did not have a single outing in which he gave up multiple hits two hit two runs rather on three hits on his watch here and that prompts the change to Mitchell Boggs with a runner aboard two in and two away. Just in case you're wondering, no intentional walks last year, only two in his career. He's the kind of pitcher he's going to go after hitters. With those numbers that you talked about, Matt. Miguel Tejada has a single tonight. Runner goes. That one's hit on the ground to Phillips. And the U.S., with its back up against the wall, will have the bottom of the order Jones, Aaron, Sebia, and Bloomquist to try to do something about their first deficit of the night. The Dominican Republic is three outs away from advancing to San Francisco. Dominican Republic And made for the 3-1 deficit that the U.S. faces in the last of the night. Some changes. Moises Sierra takes over in left field. And it's going to be Fernando Rodney who'll try to close it down for the Dominicans in the night. That ERA right there, 0.60, the lowest in baseball history for a relief pitcher. Let me tell you, Matt, this tournament he has bringing has brought mid-season stuff to the mound. The other day, topped out at 98. He's got one of the best changeups in baseball in the low 80s. He has recorded the same in each of the Dominicans' last three victories. Most recently, a scoreless ninth Tuesday against Italy. Reigning American League Comeback Player of the Year. After Adam Jones, he's going to get a pinch hitter. Teammate Ben Zobris waits on deck. Jones behind at one and two. If there were goalposts in baseball, they'd probably be coming down tonight. I want to check the hinges on this roof after that top of the ninth inning. This place has just gotten unhinged. Two balls and two strikes to Adam Jones. A swing and a drive out to the left center field. Sierra has room. It has the first out the last of the inning. 
The Dominican Republic is two outs away from moving on to San Francisco for the semifinals. They're calling it the championship round. There would be one seat left, and it would be filled based on the winner of tomorrow's matchup here. And should the U.S. fail to come back tonight, they'll have to beat Puerto Rico tomorrow to earn one of those one of those vacancies in the next round of the tournament. Tomorrow's will be an elimination game. Here's Ben Zobris now. 0 for 8 career against a guy who he is currently teammates with in Tampa. Zobrist having matched up as an opponent previously when Rodney was in Detroit and Anaheim. And it's two balls and no strikes. It's going to be another pinch hitter next. Shane Victorino was grabbed at bat. Eric Ibar with a key two strike RBI single. And that after he took a pitch that clearly was not called not a strike, it was called a strike. Came back to burn that base hit and drive in the go ahead run. What a plate appearance that was. Just, yeah, you can't overestimate the job that he did there. Two strike hit off Kimball. Two on to Zobris. Two and two now. Yeah, Rodney just so difficult for a hitter. 2 1 pitch. He throws an 83 mile an hour changeup that gets a lot of the plate because of the deception where the arm speed is the same. He doesn't even really have to locate the changeup. Full count down to Ben Zober is 3 and 2. I don't know how candid players on the Dominican roster would be when asked this question. But you suspect that in addition to wanting to advance to the finals for the first time in World Baseball Classic history, they really wanted to beat the Americans. I don't think there's any question about that. And they were not hiding those emotions before the game, but none of them were running away from the fact that it was a big game. There's a payoff pitch, and Zobra swings and sends the ball into right field. Cruz is out there, and it's foul. Shows you the confidence Rodney has in that changeup to go 3 2. He walks over as you bring the tying run to the plate. Doesn't matter. Tremendous confidence in that pitch. The Dominican Republic in 2009 ousted by one of the tournament dark horses, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It was considered a huge disappointment on the island. And Zobrist has come looking. Watch this ball 96 on the black running away from Zobrist. We've seen that pitch call to strike. We've seen worse than that call to strike. Right on the black. Shane Victorino represents the last shot for Team USA tonight. Somewhere, the likes of Albert Pujols, Adrian Beltre, David Ortiz, Pedro Martinez are watching this game, and I would imagine, Tom, have never felt any prouder. One to one. Generations of ball players. Saw Moises Alou down on the field before the game. The entire Alou family. And it is a family when it comes to baseball in the Dominican. If I wanted to say that uh, correctly, I could say they've never felt more proud. The ball and two strikes account to Shane Victorino. Wait for it, wait 
for it. And the explosion. The Dominicans are moving.